Welcome back to World 2018. It is almost time for game number two. Summoner's Cup on the line next weekend. Fnatic are up 1-0 over North America's Cloud9 here. A very one-sided game, Cloud9. Yes. Uh, outmatched by Fnatic. Kind of roll by roll, it felt like. Two more to go for Fnatic if they want to sweep this. Yeah, and C9, they picked blue side. No surprise after the last game where Fnatic, they managed to get Basically everything they wanted. Uh, early pick LeBlanc, they got to pair that with the Lee Sin from Brock. So that combination was obviously fantastic between the two players. And they still managed to get things like a Sivir for Reckless and of course Whippo. Blind picks his victor, did not actually get punished by the counter pick, mainly due to roams and ganks. Exactly. And we we're trying to look at, you know, what does need to change for this series to get more competitive. Um, you know, and a lot of focus was used on the bottom side. Uh, of the map, uh, trying to target Reckless with some of the champion bands there, mm -hmm. but he still got a very comfortable setup where, you know, Sivir, one of the champions that we associate with him actually for years now, uh, and he seems very yeah. comfortable, especially into a Tristana where you can spell shield. The uh, E is so free. Yeah, <laughs> you can you can spell shield late. It's, it's so not a problem. <laughs> exactly, it stacks up. It's very clear when it's stacking up. Um, so he definitely had a very good showing on the bottom side, but the biggest fires were in the top side of the map, and and Broxa, Caps, and Bwipo all together. Yeah, so I want to see uh, what C9 wants to first pick. On red side, they banned Irelia, Akali, Aatrox. So mm -hmm. three of them are considered like OPs or S-tier picks right now in the meta. They banned Irelia, Akali on blue side against Afrika as well in all three games in the quarterfinal. Will that be the same, or will they try and threaten a potential Akali first pick? It could be huge for either Jensen or Licorice, but they got to change up at least a couple of things because... Last game, it was over almost 10 minutes in. Yeah, we were actually having this discussion on the dive where we were thinking about the possible assassin picks between Jensen mm -hmm. um, and Caps himself, where Jensen hasn't used much Aurelia or Akali, yet Caps has. So, uh, you know, him taking the LeBlanc away, which has been- I the, think that'd be huge. It's the primary assassin that Jensen has used. Not only was it well used by Caps, but it was also a takeaway from Cloud9. So yep. a lot of value there. Well, we are into the draft as we have teams switching sides as so far most of these bands look very much the same as last time. Two more choices to go and we'll see that LeBlanc can go to Cloud9's hands or Fnatic are more worried Ooh. about denying it. It's actually Cloud9 denying this. They would rather pick something else first. Triple bands thrown at uh, Caps slash uh, possible flex picks there. And that is a lot of respect. So Urgot is still open now. Aatrox open as well. But Victor, of course, is there as the potential counter pick against Aatrox. So not expecting that as the first pick. It is oh. instead just the Victor first pick itself. <laughs> Expect the unexpected, my no friend. No one wants to pick Aatrox anymore, poor guy. Well, we'll see, of course, the Heck Room flex pick, or the counter pick, I should say, is there for Cloud9 as well, if that were to happen. We'll see what Fnatic want to do. A lot of those Cream of the Crop champions are still available, and we'll see what comes through. All right, one thing that he does very well is mobility, and mobility has been incredibly important uh, so far this tournament. Rakan, we saw in the last game where once they were ahead, Fnatic had these lightning quick engages and that made it very, very easy for them to continue to get picks and force the fights across the map. So if they do get a lead, this has been very big for Hillisang. Let's see if they value Sin Zhao here on the Fnatic side and take that away from Svenskara. And obviously based on last game, yep. it wasn't that scary, but it is still considered the best early game jungler in the professional scene. Cloud9? No. From Lucian, do they want to get that strong bot lane? They have to take it now. I would also think about taking the other side of the matchup there. Sven Skarens, Lee Sin, we haven't seen it that much mm -hmm. recently, but it has been a pick that he has also been very good on and does have those options um, as far as the extra mobility to try and work away from the Zen. And I can see Cloud9 taking the Aatrox, sending it top and challenging Fnatic to try an Urgot for themselves. They've only played it once here for Bwipo and they've banned it more than half of their game. So not a champion seemingly Fnatic are willing to play or all that practiced right. on. So this was actually a fairly safe blind and I'm curious what other counters Whippo has. His Swain is still up, for example, so I'm very curious what he will play here. To see also Jungle Wise, you asked for Lee Sin. I would also love to see his Lee Sin, but it is going to be the Graves pick that he used in the quarterfinals against the Freaker. So you have now for C9 the Victor Aatrox that can be flexed between both solo laners and then, of course, the Graves locked into the jungle. And C9 do have a lot of scaling right now on, on their composition. Victor, um, Usually past like the oh. end of 13 minute mark, needs to scale up a bit. We saw that yesterday. Get the cooldown reduction. Graves also scaling. But here we go. Early game. Jace, very, very scary. Uh, yep. Because the 
Invictus Gaming solo laners made incredible use of this champion. Uh, we'll see if Fnatic can do the same. And the Korean Chinese Jace is really good. We'll see what the uh, Danish or uh, Belgian, I believe, Jace is like here for Fnatic. I'm waiting to go through this one. I got a thumbs up. I'm pretty sure I had the country right. You got it. You nailed up. it. Uh, pretty sure I know where they're all from. Either way, there's the Lucian ban yet again, and I'm curious what else gets drafted away if Sivir finally gets banned out from Reckless. It's still just the Zaya ban so far for the combination, but we'll wait to see what else comes through into this draft. Yeah, it's good to see Fnatic just respecting that Lucian pick. There's no reason to give C9 that potential, uh, potential winning bot lane, and Draven as well, the same deal. And I think it's so important because they need an area of the map that isn't a losing lane, that doesn't have to scale up. You cannot have all scaling. We've seen this tournament. You just get absolutely run over in the early game. You need to get somewhere that is uh, pushing lane to try and play off of so you don't lose all neutral objectives early on. If you are a fanatic, you obviously want to see where the Aatrox is going and ideally put the Jace against that Aatrox. If you didn't watch yesterday, early laning phase was just so heavily favored to Jace against the Aatrox. He was always up in CS, pushing onto the turret, even getting solo kills in some of the games. No surprise here for Fnatic with Sivir, and they can still wait with the last pick. And the thing is too, with those types of matchup, um, you kind of need a jungler that brings crowd control if you want to try and kill the Jace or alleviate some of that pressure, and that is not the case here. So once again, Fnatic uh, looking pretty strong as far as the opening of their draft. Let's see what Cloud9 will respond to with the bottom lane. All right, well, another Ooh. flex round. And look at this with Lissandra picked up on top of that one. That means we've got some really non-standard picks coming through here. That's maybe a Victor bot or something else, but okay. this is going to be an exciting draft. I do know Sneaky plays a lot of Victor when he does play other lanes, when he has to play mid lane. So he at least has played the champion a lot. I'm not saying, you know, that is going to be the pick for him or, uh, you know, where they're swapping these around to, but it could be. Well, either way, it's going to be a very exciting draft. The only march going to be played by Sven Skaren in the jungle for Cloud9 as Fnatic will lock in their final pick. They seemingly need magic damage, and Azir is certainly the emperor of that as Caps brings it into the mid lane. They feel confident they can take Azir against anything in the mid lane from C9 right now. C Azir has actually been one of the picks we've seen as a last pick pretty often, not to win the early game, but because he's long range, makes him a very safe choice in mid, and then he gets to his team fighting stage on two items and becomes a powerhouse. So Fnatic got a bit of early game, but also great scaling based on mid and AD carry. Yeah, and I think the lane phase looks very good with them. Jace has the range advantage over Aatrox. You can harass him. Then you drop into the brush up on top side uh, to drop the minion aggro. Azir also can outrange Lissandra. The only thing Azir has to worry about is the all-ins, and he looks like he's taking cleanse there to try and get out of those ganks. But in the bottom lane from C9, Victor coming in from Sneaky, Leona from Zazel. They're gonna pair up this Victor burst with the engage from the Leona. And it's against a Sivir, but we have to remember if Leona engages onto her, she will get to the target, and if you waste your spell shield, as a Sivir, you're gonna get stunned and you're gonna get bursted down very quickly. There is so much crowd control on the Cloud9 side in the bottom lane. We'll see if that ends up being punishing. Yeah, we'll see it. Sneaky gonna be taking the victor here. We've seen him use it on stream, but now at Worlds in the semifinals, the Victor Leona lane for the bottom. Will this be the surprise card that Cloud9 need to get back into this series? And will it be the comeback that North American fans and C9 themselves are hoping for in this one? Fnatic handily took game one. We have seen game one not necessarily mean the series. Fnatic themselves dropped game one and beat EDG. G2 in the quarterfinals dropped game one to RNG and still won that series as well, despite how not close those games were. So now, on to Summoner's Rift, it's time for game two. I am definitely gonna have my eyes on Broxa. Looking for some aggressive passing, pathing here from the Xin Zhao to maybe even split the top side of the map. Uh, and try and secure some area for Bwipo to work with. Bwipo is a very aggressive top laner, always looking for trades, uh, and wants to be able to abuse this pick. See, my right eye, agree with you, will be on Brox, and my left eye, on the other hand, will look at the bottom lane from C9 and this Victor pick. They grab it early. We saw last game Bwipo doing super well on a top lane, but they didn't move it to that top side. I want to see if they can actually utilize it with the Leona here, the kill pressure they're going to have with Ignite as well on Zazel. It's a lot of early game damage just from the support alone. 
And already there are differences here. You can see with Sneaky's rune choice, he's taking Airy for trading in the bottom uh, side of the map, not the Kleptomancy that we see for the top side, trying to uh, farm up there. That definitely makes a lot of sense. He also has Domination. Usually, I can't see those Domination runes, but usually you'll get Taste of Blood, Taste of blood as yep. well as uh, Ravenous Hunter for you the healing. And uh, that is for sustain in lane. All right, so once again, you've got Caps with Cleanse versus Jensen's Lissandra. He was really good at getting away from those ganks before. We'll see the attempt once again here as Licorice and Whip will get to their lanes and the mid laners fight as well. And yeah, this is the problem for C9. Even though it was fancy with the Victor swap to bottom side, they end up with this Aatrox versus Jace lane. Now there could be a difference between Whippo's Jace and the Shy's Jace, of course. They definitely have seen a lot of Western Jace players struggle in the past to actually snowball games. Whippo here can prove everyone wrong and say that he has actually practiced this enough to hard win this matchup because it is a good lane for him. And Whippo came in with confidence. He said he looked at that Afrika Freaks match where uh, Keen had done so well in that 1v1. He said, if I can go anywhere close to that, I'm pretty sure I can really show Licorice what's up. And in game one, that was true. Maybe some jungle help as the bot laners fight. We'll see what this game looks like in that top lane matchup as well. Yeah, I was going to say, Whippo definitely has the right mentality for it. Uh, as far as being very aggressive, pushing in Licorice, zoning him off the minion wave here, uh, and trying to use his Shock Blast to land an extra bit of damage. Licorice now looking for maybe the long Q on the minion. Whippo gets that trade outside of turret range, so still that has advantages to the Fnatic top side, and the wave will slowly push towards Licorice. He will gain the XP, not zoned out of this, but advantages still going to Fnatic side. And like we were talking about, Graves does not bring hard CC like a lot of junglers do. He does bring a lot of damage, though. So uh, if Licorice can actually set it up, then there is a possibility. I don't see it being super likely. Bottom side, though, trading very heavily, so that might be the area uh, junglers do gravitate towards. And crucially, that is a pre-level three fight right there. When three comes through, as this fight happens at the top side, a lot of health, actually, that Whipple might lose, but Sunscreen's gonna run away. But at three, uh, Sneaky gets the ability to stun whatever the setup is from Zazel, and that can start really turning this around. Yeah, Fnatic always have to be careful. Another one. Ooh, and they wait out the spell shield for Reckless, who's going to be stunned up now, takes some damage, but really good shielding Hillisong, weaving those E's through quite nicely. But I like that saving the spell shield for the actual Q stun is what you're trying to do as Reckless. Obviously, Sazel knew that was going to happen as you highlighted Freak, so always mind games in the bottom lane when you play against spell shields. Meanwhile, Top Svenskan did show up, got a bit of damage on Whippo, and that was basically it. But the Jace is currently out of mana, and Ligris is trying his best to just match farm. He's slightly down early on. Yeah, that was the main point of Svenskeren showing his face up there, was there's so many minions in front of the turret. He was trying to buy Licorice time to get some last hits there in front. Meanwhile, in the mid lane, again, uh, this exchange going pretty heavily uh, in favor of the damage for the Ooh, Ooh, and Never mind. This one goes for Licorice. Yeah, that's actually pretty solid there in that top side. We know that Broxa is nearby and can come through if he's needed. All right, so first trade, we got to see Licorice actually win. Obviously, Whippo is low on mana, as we highlighted before. He will go back and use TP to lane, most likely. We might admit, as we highlighted with the last pick, against Lissandra, like, long-range poke is just so effective because she can only really all-in if she wants to threaten you properly, and that's why he sits with cleanse and a dash on the Azir. Yeah. But that's also why you see the teleport for the Lissandra. And Jensen, his teleport has actually been forced out already. And that's the reason that why he's staying even in CS right now. Uh, has already used his first teleport back to lane after he was forced out there by the harassment of his years long range. I want to see if C9 maybe go for a play into that mid side though and force the uh, the cleanse out early from Caps, then try again at six maybe while the health bar is still low. And you have to give him kind of an itchy trigger finger to make sure he can stay safe. For now, both junglers have been farming, other than that one little peek towards top side from Svenskeren. We are kind of waiting for Broxa to pull the trigger first. Uh, it feels like on a Sin Zhao. Graves would love to just say, okay, no one is ganking anything. Let's just trade farm for like 10 minutes. That is great for Svenskeren specifically. First level five, Svenskeren's jungle is going so far okay. And they've matched pretty similar on the recalls there. And the division coming out for Broxa's side. Going to be spotted out now by Sven as well. Mid laner's recalling, so Sven's trying to get there in time, but Broxa does a good uh, job killing this scuttle crab so quickly. Let's see if he continues with his invade though. There is a smite up for Svenskeren, but not one for Broxa. With Zazel around, he actually could have creep jacked him, but 
don't know he was there, it seems. So, and that was with both the bottom lane and the mid lane having recall. Oh, they found him now, though. The stun is in. He's already burned the flash as well. Is this the kill? But out of nowhere, Hillisong is in and finds the save. The ignite's not going to be enough, and Fnatic survive. Yeah, the reason Sven Scam was waiting because he needed some more support. He knew the Fnatic bot lane had recall, but he didn't know exactly where it would be in terms of running back to the lane. Were already in the jungle? Were they near the tier 2 turret or not? But the moment Zazel showed up, he knew, okay, you can force a flash here. It's a good early advantage in the jungle matchup. And that could be important to try and stop Whipple later from just perma pushing his top side, because Aatrox will need help, as we can see right now in terms of CS difference. You have bot again. Big stun coming across as well. Look at knock on Hillsum, but good positioning by Reckless to let him dodge away out of that stun circle. And the game overall as a position, 100 gold lead for Fnatic. Their overall laning phase, most of that being done in the top side with 11 CS difference. Fnatic slightly ahead in this early game. Yeah. Meanwhile, Sneaky definitely showing his experience on this Victor pick, um, even though not too much in the bottom side of the map. As you said, it was really important that Reckless positions far away from Hillisung so they get the max distance outside of the gravity field there to avoid that chain CC that you were mm -hmm. talking about earlier, Freak. We will most likely see when they actually go for another all-in that they try and get on to the Sivir. But she cannot dash out of the stun from Victor the moment she gets CC'd. And as long as Zazel just holds on to his Q until Spell Shield is gone, he actually has the advantage because it's just a quick animation. And if they'd manage to do that, Reckless will be stunned in place for quite a while and that could be enough to kill him, but for now he's playing very safe. Also, this bottom lane presence for Cloud9 has allowed Sven Skarin, uh to move in and take control of the river around Dragon. He could actually do it, but they don't have any vision on Broxa, so he's a little bit worried where the positioning of Sven Zhao is since there's no deep wards in this game. And he's kind of hovering around a possible uh, dive or counter gank here from the bottom lane. New ward gets put in place right there to spot him. He will. Steal away the blue buff, Zazel can roll him up and help him as well. And if you are Fnatic on bot side, you're just trying to hold on. You're just trying to survive. You know Siva in late game teamfights will be a massive threat, a massive advantage for you. But early on, it's hard for you to do a whole lot against the Victor and Leona. So right now, it's just a, a battle against the clock almost. Where Fnatic, they know eventually they will get dived. They will get, you know, ganked by TP coming from Jensen, something like that. And the bot lane will die. Okay, ult on a Reckless, though. He's not level 6, so he can lose a lot of health here. Burn Summoner heal to get away from that fight. Ult down, and not another shot will land. We'll land. See if the junglers actually do get involved, because they left behind Ooh. a little bit of position there. They've seen Broxa at the Gromp right now. Uh, meanwhile, Sven Skarin keeps up his power farm as well. Capturing really well in the mid lane. Man is getting a little bit low, but he has another Corrupting Potion stack if needed. And so far, he feels safe. Broxa spotted by the Scuttle Crab. And so it's going to be waiting around on the wings, but no fights to be had just yet. Still a very close game. This one now Cloud9, 200 gold ahead. I think they want the 2v2 here, even though Cap's a little bit low on mana. Yeah, I don't know if Cap's can do a full combo. They actually might not want to fight because of this. Uh, junglers equal levels and similar on items. Boots up for Broxa. We also know if a fight breaks out in the bot side river, it's c 9 bot lane that's roaming first to join and try and turn it around. Cap's job is effectively to try and keep this lane pushed so if Jensen ever leaves Rome or TP, the turret will take a ton of damage or Caps can decide to move instantly and try and match a counter gank in the bottom lane. And I think it is very important also to look at the experience there for the bottom lane. Zazel, once he hits level six, then you do have a possibility of a big long range stun to actually come in and change the face of one of those team fights. But as of right now, a lot of defensive vision for Fnatic in the river. You can see control wards on the top side, as well as trinket wards on the bottom side of the river. So Cloud9 don't have a lot of routes to create uh, offensive plays, and they just continue to farm away. Well, it's been a fairly slow-paced early game. Cloud9 actually have a positive win rate with a gold deficit at 15. They've actually been able to make comebacks happen there. Uh, despite a high first blood rate, not the most dominant early game team, but as you mentioned, the overall scaling for Fnatic quite good. That Sivir at about 380 CS gets to full items, and Reckless can completely take over a game from that point onwards, and arguably before then. Uh, first few recalls up coming through. Sneaky on his second hex core augment. That was his first recall. Stayed on for a very long time. Blue handed off to Jensen. And we'll see as Caps is pretty much full of resources. Going to be, of course, missing that one as it was stolen a little while ago by Sven Skarin. Still a holding pattern in the early game. Only a couple hundred gold difference between these teams. Yeah, we're kind of just waiting for that fight in the bot lane, but Reckless and Hillisang are just staying so far back. 
quick little trade for Sneaky right there. Nothing Reckless can do in return. He needs to always save the spell shield for that potential engage. Meanwhile, Svenskaren trying to control the bot side river with the Scuttler here. It's actually pretty fortunate it's been bot side scuttle so many times. That is the one pressured lane that C9 has. Is Svenskaren can keep coming down to this bottom river, and it's been a source of strength here. This Cloud Drake not picked up just yet. There's really been a very low Drake pressure series so far. Yeah, I'm just kind of waiting for the tower dive from C9 against the bot lane of Fnatic, or at least when they move in behind the turret and then force Fnatic to run away to take that first turret of the game, because they know eventually the Jace will take the top lane turret, if nothing happens and it's just a pure 1v1, yeah. Tonight they do have the option with the Sandra and Graves. Big trade right here, pulling Guppo back, who's a bit low on mana now, but Licorice on a half HP. No one's coming to his side just yet, but this might be the time to go for the dive on the other side. There's the word over the wall, not going to be stolen. And it's going to be still equal farming the two junglers. So another fight continues up the top side. Pretty decent damage. Trading blows, but of course, a very nice CS lead for Whippo. TP's available for the top laner. Here now we're going to find that stun. The engage. Look at the burst damage. And finally, Cloud9 get first blood. All right, let's see if they turn this into an objective afterwards. Roxa is on the bottom side, so uh, they're going to start up this dragon. And there's a possible answer. If Whippo's recalling right now to heal up, maybe he teleports in, even though they lost Telesang. It depends what the wards and the waves look like, though, because, of course, Victor, it's completely free to push waves in here, so Cloud Drake going to be a formality here. Cena going to pick that one up after their 700 gold lead, and Zazel on the way towards mid ulti list, but no prey to find here. Yeah, I like the fact that he just goes back to the top lane with the Jace. His goal is to win that lane as hard as possible while bot lane is surviving. It is obviously not to try and save the day just yet by going down here. Around mid lane, Caps and Jensen fighting. A lot of damage coming through, looking for the play, not looking to find it. The oh, they get it. Justin Reigns and Nakam is there, though. They might get him. Jensen has to self ult to stay alive. Pretty big plays, though, on both sides. No kills, ult burn, and a huge knockback. That was sick by Caps. Over the wall he goes, the CC towards Zazel, but he's tanky. And C9 walk away, zero for zero. Very, very close action here in the mid lane. Even after Jensen stops in point blank range there, uh, Hillsang does go for that dive with the Rakan. And now five Can members of him? Fnatic are around mid lane. Far oh, throw, shock blast! And Whippo finds himself the solo kill. Hard work done by his teammates. Oh, he walked down from the top lane. He knew Jensen could be around, recalling fairly low. Jensen could not flash in time, and it's Whippo with the kill. Big cash in right there for Whippo. Wasn't able to get that big uh, of a money lead off of the top lane there, alone with Licorice, but just comes down to the mid lane to cash in, finds his gold there, and now he does have the Ghost Blade, so the lethality starting to come through and it's building up. Well, we will most likely see a C9 kill bot lane now. Both summoners were used by Hillisang mid when he tried to get in charm range to stop Jensen from ulting himself. He couldn't just get there in time until it was under the turret. But now with no flash, squishy Rakan, all in from C9 is so powerful. Like, their goal is to get this bot lane tier 1 turret as fast as possible, start opening up the game. Because when you do that, you also stop the Jace from taking over the top lane. And right now, Licorice is trying to slow down this push. Yeah, I'm super interested to see if Hillisang's purchase of the Mercury Treads, Tenacity, is going to be enough to find him that split second in between the crowd controls to try and uh, disallow the, the Cloud9 stacking. But uh, we'll see if that is enough. Right now, again, controlling this Vision Ward you know, around the river. Control Ward's put down for Fnatic to see the constant movement uh, between bottom and mid. Crazy shift, however, in game speed or amount of action compared to the first game. Where Fnatic at this point were up 10 kills and 5, 6k yeah. gold. Very true. Now it is, of course, a slower composition with the Zero, with the Sivir, and then the, the Victor Leona pick in the bottom lane, kind of dictating everything on, on the bot side. Skaron's fighting again. Yeah, good damage there in the jungle, pushing forward. Zayson nearby as well. Looks for Brox, it doesn't go in though. And it's still cast being pushed back at half HP, has to run away. Yeah, I think they were possibly thinking about forcing the flash there from Cap since his cleanse is on cooldown, and Zazel did have the ultimate. They were uh, gonna trade those CDs, but here we go. Brox actually might find him. Spotted on both sides there with wards coming down, and it's gonna be safe wave for Caps. as Cloud9's gonna walk away from this one as Jensen makes his way to the river. Still no turrets yeah. going down yet. They're trying to just control the jungle by battle warding, as we hear a lot of. Mm -hmm. People call it when you just invade in with champions more than necessarily wards, and you just force them out. There's the jump forward, a root towards Hillisung, still summonerless, but staying alive. He jumps back to a teammate. And a nice blue buff, so you know, Whippo actually answering back what Svenskeren had done a few minutes ago. 
It's gonna feel pretty good, but the trade can continue now. Can anyone join into this fight soon as Hillifan's coming over, but so is Jensen. This is gonna be very quickly a two on three as they run towards the Herald. The ult's gonna find the stun. They're going in for Cass, but he's knocked back in the turret. Is it the burst damage? Yes, Zazel has all the kills on C9 and gets away from the turret. He's burning though, and it will be a trade kill. Nicely done to Broxa. And oh. they're, they're not done yet. Whipple here trying to snipe people as they siege up on the turret. This whole time, Reckless is pushing the bottom lane turret. So C9 trying to get some damage and answer. And no one answering bottom lane is a very good thing for Fnatic. Look how low this wave is. This could die this very wave right here unless C9 rush it down faster. They are staying, but Brox has cleared the wave away. And hard CC for Hillisong. He might lose his life, but he saves the turret. It gives first turret gold to Reckless. What a play there. Hillisong actually with a big sacrifice to be able to get that small timing window to earn them that bonus. Top side, they are going to use the teleport to get back out on the field, though, and stop that damage as well. All right, let's see what happened right here. No. Cleanse in the mid lane from Caps. He actually gets stunned by the ulti, and then of course Zazel can engage onto him, but with the knockback, they get Leona under the turret, and then she ends up going down in the end with the dot here. Meanwhile, I think Whippo had to flash over the Rift Hell wall because Ligorous was chasing him. Yeah. So no flash topside from the Jace. Ligorous got to push in the turret as well, but mid lane stayed alive for now. Fnatic slightly ahead in gold. More action is coming, and we keep looking towards the hard engage from the support. That whole time, you know, with the row mid from the bottom lane of Cloud9. Reckless now actually has caught up and is ahead in CS in addition to the solo turret bonus goal that he got. So that's exactly where Fnatic's want to put money is on the Sivir to try and get those items. Yeah, it really felt like the, the easy choice for C9 was just to go bot lane and secure the turret. Let's see what happens here. They lose the shield up in time to not get burst down, but he's still at half HP. Looking for a bit more. He's going to find a stun, but spell shielded by Reckless. And an easy one for zero. Another well-played fight by the European team. And this is kind of the problem now or for C9 when they lost this bot lane turret is Fnatic don't have to sit there anymore with Sivir and the Rakan. Those two types were getting pushed under Toad. You could have set up a tower dive very easily, killed them, taken an objective, but because they kept moving towards mid, they've given Reckless enough time to get out of this really tough laning phase, and suddenly it's Fnatic around mid lane getting a kill. Fnatic kind of forcing C9 to play a more of a macro game, playing around the side lanes, make the good rotations, and all C9 wanted to do was dive, dive, dive. They've not done a whole lot of that just yet, but now looking at the top side, the 1v1, of course, keep in mind it's the summoner with Whippo, but he's playing this so well, pushing back Licorice, dodging a shock blast, but these trades keep going the way of Fnatic. And look at the difference here. C9 putting more people on top side of the map to go for aggressive plays on the chase and the Rift Herald, where Fnatic taking up the Ocean Drake for themselves for the regeneration, and they don't even have enough time to actually answer with the Rift Herald here. So Fnatic getting away with an extra objective there. Let's see where Fnatic puts Reckless right now, because of course both Sivir and Azir kind of want to sit around the mid lane. Typically you just want to push the one side lane, where Reckless or Caps are sitting, and then go join the rest of the team in mid. You play the 1-4 setup, where Jace is the only split pusher on your team. Reckless can do that now, but it does mean C9 gets the first push in mid with more members. Now they're known to die. They're going to find a slow on the Caps. Will they find the re-engage? Zazel not going to cheat far enough forward, but this turret's at 5 health. It will be cleared down, so one on the board for C9. But it's still Fnatic up about 1,000 gold in this game. Reckless shoved in the bot wave. It's getting denied to the turret right now. And we've seen that Buipo is constantly able to win these trades up against Licorice, popping the Yomus. Staying fine. He's not been able to perma push the lane for a while because C9 has kept so many players around mid, who could then eventually go top as Kobe highlighted just before. Now he might get a chance as it's Fnatic's turn to push, and you will constantly see trades. When Fnatic push out bot lane, they give up control mid. When they go mid them with four players, it's C9 who has to go bot with someone and take the minions, so they have to give up control in mid, and it's a constant trade back and forth. The team who makes the mistake and disrespects the number advantage, the other team was going to lose someone or an objective somewhere. And everybody gravitating up to the top side of the map here towards Riftailed. It does despawn uh, as Baron comes to play inside the pit, but not before Fnatic have taken another turret for themselves. Top side now also down, and the only one left standing on the outside here for Cloud9 is the mid lane uh, for them to try and defend around. 1,500 gold up is Fnatic at the 20 minute mark here. Not quite the difference we had in game one, but a lead nonetheless. And Fnatic so far looking like the better team on the day. And we'll see what later game Jace looks like. So far, Whipple's been laning well, and he's gotten that one snipe earlier on. We've yet to find our, ourselves these catastrophic team fights 
as we wait. Reckless almost at two items here. Jace, notably not normally a good team fighter, but Azir has got that uh, Nash's tooth done and is pretty much online now for that. Very, very true. A uh, small change here compared to yesterday's Jace, where we got the double lethality early on that would hit people for like 60% of their HP when he landed a shock blast at 20 minutes. This Black Cleaver instead, so focusing a little bit more on shredding armor against more tanky members. Yeah. Not necessarily the big squishies. You've got two Aftershock members, and even Leona just prints armor onto herself by pressing W, so yep. it's it's a good idea based on what you're hitting here. I think it's a very good build, and we will continue to wait as it's the much slower-paced game, not these dives we're normally seeing from C9 throughout the quarterfinals in the group stage. Fnatic able to play reactive, able to get a lot of farm. In fact, every single lane out farming their opposite member here. Yeah, especially Caps in the mid lane there. He's got the completed Banshee's Veil now. That, in addition to his cleanse, might allow him to get out of this. And fairly easily, we yep. can say. Just shuffles himself out, loses the Banshee's Veil, but doesn't mean enough. Top lane might fall, but mid's going to be answered. Fnatic consistently, it'll put pressure on this map. And though top lane will eventually drop, you have to imagine they're still getting more and more out of this one. All three outer turrets are gone, and Hillisong sees Zazel's here. Kite's back, stays alive. C9 spending a, a lot of time hiding in the jungle, hoping to find that one pick. Either someone would walk through the jungle to defend top lane, or they could get onto caps. But in the end, they only get the top lane turret. Bot lane did stay alive as well. Jensen, can he find a good engage here? Uh, he's spotted. He's going to try. They're coming over the wall, looking for the play there. Not an ult just yet. Reckless cutting away. Fast pops the spell shield. Not going to drop, though. We saw the bot lane split push go pretty well. That turret's down to about one third as Whippo keeps making the pressure happen. And Fnatic's so good at disengaging, denying these C9 dives, and continuing to leverage that Jace vs. Aatrox map. Ooh, just missed right there. Hillisang was face checking. He's trying. The double knock him is in. The third charm is there as well. Here comes the shuffle. There's going to be a set on the cast, but he cleanses it away. Zazel's low flashing out of this one. So far, all the team is staying alive, but Licorice joins in. Caps dies. Broxa might be next. He's running away. They're going to jump forward. They find a bit of damage. They're going to find the second kill. C9 get a two for zero team fight. Yeah, they wanted to flash for that kill because taking down Broxa means there's no spite for Fnatic. Fnatic, will they now force on the bear? And Zazel has gone back to base because he was so low in spend. He's down at 300 himself, but they gotta watch out for any other shock blasts or boomerangs. And you can see he's kind of running away from this one now. So Fnatic, despite being three on five on the map, still able to play for Minuways first. Fnatic, they face check, dodge the first engage, and then call for the all in, but the Jace was not there. He was running to the fight, didn't get to join in time. So Fnatic, while they did manage to actually get a fine engage at first, didn't seem like they had not enough damage here. Let's watch it again. So Engage comes in with four members. Look on your minimap. The Jace is currently not there. All in. Nice flash from Sneaky. And Caps then gets stunned in the middle of the fight. And no one is dropping down. Lissandra with the great ulti as well. Yeah, Rippo did not have his teleport. So that's why the Jace was so late here. Licorice teleports in on the Aatrox. Uh, but no Jace teleport to answer, and Cloud9 are able to get some kills for themselves with an Infernal Drake coming up in less than 50 seconds here on the map. We very well may have another fight shortly. Well, the timing is going to allow for all the ultimates to be back up from cooldown, but the summoner spells burned in that last fight will not be available. And we can see Reckless already putting out pretty good work in these fights. 2300 and that one tops the charts and it's only gonna get better from there. Exactly, he's not on IH yet. He won't have it for this fight either when the Infernal spawns. C9 have a lot of damage on their side with Sven Skeren on this Graves here sitting on a completed Black Cleaver as well. So C9 definitely wants to look for more fight. More fights, sorry, right now. While in the bottom lane, Jensen tries to sneak in the brush. So far in the fog, but Look at how far back Caps playing. He hugs the river, stays away from the brush, stays away from the fog of war, and always safe in these ones. So good heads up play there. The mid lane is cleared back and forth, but now the Infernal is alive. Whippo has TP, but is running down from the top lane already. And Caps is still in this Drake. Yeah, Cloud9 have more members here, though. They might be able to burn it down before Fnatic arrive. Yeah, there's. And spawning Caps, they did. They know Baron can't be rushed that fast. Even if Fnatic runs that way, it's not that big of a risk just yet. It's all about just killing the wards over there for Fnatic. They knew taking this fight would have been too risky. Caps tried his luck by starting it, hoping yeah. that C9 would be too far away or just not reacting in time. Caps having no flash, no cleanse is a very good mark for C9. I do appreciate it again as you're saying. Try to sneak it. If you get lucky, then great. But, you know, making the smart choice of, okay, they showed, we'll back off, no problem here. Uh, good play. And, and again, I think Fnatic have to play around those cooldowns. Those summoner spells are required to win these team fights. And so for a little while, uh, Cloud9 will have map control. Yeah, the two carries there for Fnatic, both with spell shields, uh, now going to be fairly difficult to dive in on. And we'll have to look for layered spells, trying to pop those early in the fight. 
Uh, whereas Cloud9 now laying down the control wards around Baron, trying to create a pocket of fog of war to look for those picks like we just saw a couple minutes ago, make use of the Leona and the Lissandra's uh, very quick initiation. We have Pickaxe on Reckless and about 1,500 gold at this point. He desperately wants the Eye Edge, but it's C9 who can dictate the pace because they have the Baron control. If they start it, Fnatic have to react. And that's when you can get the all-in engage from C9. Just look how safe Caps is, right? Clears wards from the back of the pit, has the soldiers ready. C9 puts a new one down, but it's going to be so hard to catch this guy. Cleanses up right about now. Banshee fell obviously already done a while ago. It's such a tense moment right now. If you're a Fnatic and you keep going towards the late game, it, it gets just better and better with your Zia and your Sivir. You are C9, you have so much all-in, so much burst damage. If you can actually catch someone, you take them down in just a matter of seconds. Hey, here comes the play forward towards Sneaky. The nice flow! Oh, what a play out of Whippo! It's a 5v4 for Fnatic, and the fight continues to the front lines. The rest of the team dives forward. A little bit of low health bars on the Jace. They're trying to get a trade kill here at C9. They can't get him yet. They finally get the shutdown. It goes over to Graves, but it's a shutdown as well towards Liquors on the top side. Fnatic 2 to 1. Yeah, 2 for 1 for Fnatic, and that gives them control over the Baron Pit. All those wards we just saw C9 place are going to be cleared out, and they're starting it up. Such an insane call by Fnatic. They were the ones stalling and waiting while C9 were trying to look for picks and they all in on the no flash victor. But there is a Graves with a TP and a smite, or a flash and a smite, and the Scryer's Blue's gonna spot that Baron for a long time. Jensen poked out, Caps playing it so well, knocks in Zazel, they'll find another kill, and they're back on a Baron, and the vision's gonna be hard. Somehow Cloud9 must make another big Baron steal. Halo Sun buys the time, and it's not gonna be picked up by Cloud9. It will be Fnatic smashing the map. Rocks against the smite, and Fnatic also get the kills on the Cloud9. Now they have Baron buff to try and push with. Perfect timing from Hillisang trying to get in there and CC the Graves so they could burst down Baron before he had time to flash in. He got in in the end, but he couldn't get it. Sneaky's flash, I believe when this whole fight started, just got ready. But it wasn't enough for him to actually get out of the engage from Fnatic. And Whippo's own flash there to dodge the Leona stun, get to the side, finish up the kill. So allow them, yes, in the end, they do trade top laners here, but Fnatic, as we saw with the extra damage, starting up Baron, and then they actually force this. They have confidence in Roxa to be able to secure that. Yeah, this whole thing is amazing shot calling from Fnatic. Finding the pick in mid, stopping C9 from getting full control of the map, and then Hillisang seizing Sven Scarrett so he can't get into the pit early enough, and Fnatic secure it. It's been really one of the biggest improvements of this team during this tournament is their Baron setups and how they can manage to do Barons under pressure, not giving a lot of chances for other teams to kill them or steal the Baron. It's looking really good now for Fnatic. 5,000 gold up, looking at a quick disengage as mid turret is falling rather low, and a few more shots will put that one in, and Cloud9 is going to seed control. Fnatic gets farther and farther ahead, looking at a 2-0 start for this best of five. They're getting closer and closer to this one, as gold lead now closer to 6,000. And now they also got the items they were looking for. Before a big 5 on 5 team fight, but they created that great pick in the mid lane. Whippo and Hillisang on the bottom side, pushing another one. All out of turrets gone. And a good macro game for Fnatic. They split the map up. They were able to play fast in game one. They got a lot of really good ganks out of Rocks. They got every lane ahead, and they just completely crushed it. This one a lot more slow. Whippo on the side lane, split pushing. The advantage matchup over Licorice. And that continued to create more and more and more pressure. Fnatic heavily up in turrets here. And they're very well set up to use this Baron buff effectively. They split their big solo lane range in top and bottom here. Whipple and Hillisang actually going in on Licorice. Don't find too much though. Licorice puts in a bit of damage now being slowed up. And woof, down below 1,000 HP as well. Oh, and they're going to go for the big play. And that's why he's going to have to put the open. The mini was in the way. So here comes the hard engage. And it's going to be Fnatic fighting off more than they can shoot. Cloud9 pick up two kills, but their base is under fire. Top inhibitor turret's gone already. Mid one's almost gone as well. Will there be a re-engage? The Banshee's Veil is off. Zazel has an ult, but Caps has cleanse. Oh, gets the slow. Walks away with the cleanse right there. So two kills part lane for C9, but top inhib just died. Mid lane turret didn't drop. But we'll, of course, not get that much HP back. Fnatic can easily walk down and actually take it down. Next time they end up pushing, in the end, C9 knew we need to do something. We have to force an engage somewhere, or we're just going to lose too many turrets. They couldn't stop their Zia top lane. And this is the engage on bot side. 
Yeah, Hillisang goes in. They wanted to try and combo Licorice there before he could pop his ultimate, uh, but the Shock Blast got blocked by minions, and Cloud9, as he said, they commit to the bottom side to try and kill off one of these points of pressure. In doing that, Fnatic takes the top inhibitor and almost the mid uh, inhibitor turret. Cloud9, though, back out for the Cloud Drake, and they will secure it. Take what you can when you're on the map right there. Double Cloud is at least mobility, but might not matter if they're stuck inside their base with a 6,000 gold deficit. Fnatic get kind of all the say of what happened in this game. Elder Dragon will spawn at 37. We'll see if it matters in this one. And the carries for Fnatic are actually so safe right now. Reckless, in addition to having Spell Shield, has both Summoners and a QSS. We already talked about Caps and his Banshee's Veil as well as his Flash being available and his ear just being uh, such a good champion for self-healing mm -hmm. that it becomes very difficult for C9 to actually catch them off guard and force it. Here they go, though. They're going on Proxa. They found a slow, but he has Flash. He's not going to be knocked down. Spencer, they have a piece of diving forward on this one. Proxa building so much space. And a charm into the back line. Hillisong getting safe, getting right back away. Now Licorice for some Flash to the wall. But look at that one as Bubble knocks him back, but still cutting away. It's still the five on five. Health bar is a bit low, but no kills picked up here. Out they go. In the end here, Fnatic, they saw an opening for an engage, but then they also noticed Atrix on the side and four members just instantly switched and chased Licorice instead. They didn't actually get anything. Uh, Flash still available on the C9 side. Yeah. Hillisang ended up finding two players with the knockoff, but no one followed him. They all chase the Aatrox. Okay, here it comes. Fnatic with super minions on top side. Only a couple hits on this mid turret. Nobody Tight timings here. C9 going to clear the wave, and they're going to walk over to top side. Keep in mind, this could be backdoorable easily by Fnatic. Going to walk four, oh. couple of traps, Whipper Whippo. They're not going to turn it down. Will this be the fight? In goes Slickerish, and it's a big bunch of damage. They popped off one, but here comes the backline access. Slickerish puts a flash away. It's two for one, three for one. Kills coming across as C9 picks up the combo oh. the backline. Oh, look at Caps. He's done everything, oh. and Sneaky falls. A massive quadra kill for Caps. This will be 2-0, and Fnatic are a single game away from the World Finals. Insane ultimate right there from Caps to get the Quadra kill and finish out that game. Massive, massive performance out of Fnatic mid laner here into this one. He has looked so good all series long. LeBlanc in game one, Azir in game two pretty much flawless the entire way through this one. Yeah, so game one, we saw early game Fnatic dominating. Game two, we got the late game Fnatic defending from the bot side in the early game, defending mid with all the roams coming from C9 to try and kill them. They managed to stay alive for so long, and in the end, you called it Freak, some good macro moves. They actually find a great pick on Sneaky that gets them the Baron, and then we get these final team fights where it felt like there was enough damage on C9 to kill the front line. Yeah. But then there was an Azir standing and just doing doot, 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 and eventually you kill <laughs> Three item Azir, three item A little super. bit more doot, doot. Works pretty well. They cut it nicely. So well played by Fnatic. And now for a closer look on how that 2-0 start has, ha has happened, let's head over to the State Farm Analyst Desk. Thank you very much, gentlemen. 2-0 lead now for Fnatic in this best of five. Not quite as dominant as the first game, although the way it ended, they definitely looked like they were still in control uh, and feel much more comfortable on the Rift overall than any of the Cloud9 members. But that is kind of the nature of the composition that both teams, especially Fnatic, really put together. You're not going to get that same explosive dominant performance when you have an Azir and a Sivir. You have that late game insurance policy. You can play the big 5v5 because you can create a lot of distance there. Uh, and I think that this was a, a pretty clean sweep by Fnatic. I want to come to you, though, Jap, because we were talking about... You were very quick to disavow Cloud9 after game yeah. one. True. Uh, citing, True. Citing the draft is one of the things that, you know, instilled some fear in you. Right. They've definitely tried something different and new here in game two. What were your thoughts yeah. on it? Yeah, so the thing they stuck with was the soul lane bans, and the block ban was very disheartening. But I was actually happy to see the victor first pick once they flexed it bottom lane, I was like, wow, that was actually super clever at one lane. That's kind of like, I feel like they're drafting trump card. Yeah. So the fact that that still wasn't enough to take down Fnatic, because it made them switch things all over the map. Like it made them play two late game laning picks in Azir and Saber, but they just out CS'd every single lane and then won team fights. It was impressive by Fnatic. But at least Cloud9 had something. They had a very destructive draft, right? Their pick power here is insane. Their yep. burst damage is huge. The problem is, the reason, again, why I saw how C9 could win, but I thought Fnatic overall would win a best of five is 
it felt more like controlled explosions that Fnatic could deal with rather than explosions by C9 that would blow open the game. Just like against EDG, there were these moments like, oh, a double kill, this could be the moment C9 takes it over. But somewhere else on the map, Fnatic were getting more. They never fell into a gold hole. Uh, gold hole. It never feels like they're 5,000, 8,000 gold behind, despite there being highlight moments for the enemy team. And by the end, it takes one big play and the game just ends. It never drags out. We are just further exploring the rabbit hole of picks. You mentioned gold differentials between game one and game two here on your screen. Now, C9 actually up just a yeah, little bit yeah. at 15, where they were down almost 6K in game one. And so I think it speaks to, again, just the fact that it was a closer game too. But when you look at the compositions, when you look at the uh, how willing Fnatic is to just scale at even gold, it, it makes that stat look less impressive. And it's also the fact that, uh, as they were saying, you know, things were going right. You could see where Cloud9 had their win conditions, where Fnatic were going to have their win conditions in terms of the roadmap set by both comps. But it was just a single mistake. And that's what's really troubling when you look at this best of five. Depending on whatever happens in these last few games, it's the fact that right now Fnatic are winning on a micro level. They're winning in... The, uh, the flex game level, the fact that Cloud9 have to pull out mm -hmm. those trump cards, and they're also winning on a macro level, that they're able to find that single pick, know exactly where they need to be on the map, and then execute and destroy and eat up the rest of the Here's map. that pick you're talking about in the mid lane. Sneaky gets obliterated yeah. by the flanking Jace. Flashless Victor, fight to follow. Yes, they kill Bwipple because he burned his flash, but they also get licorice. So then you're put in this situation where you say, okay, we have four people alive, we have one Ocean Drake, it's gonna help us heal up a tiny little bit, Let's go. And you have to be super clean in your communication. Who do you peel for? How do you secure the Baron? And I think they do that. As you watch this, they very quickly secure Sven Skaren so he can't get a smite. And there is a misplay by C9 that we have to watch for. Watch Jensen. He's planning to self alt, but he doesn't get it off. The tournament here, one thing that we have seen in Worlds 2018 is Baron setups have been better than ever before. We're seeing very much fewer Baron steals. You see Hillisung is over the wall. By the time Spence Gun flashes in, he's out. And like you mentioned, Jet, the self fault doesn't happen. He was caught between trying to interrupt a smite, maybe try to yep. burst with his self fault. In the end, does neither. And honestly, the game, one more exception, but the game largely ends through that play. Oh, absolutely. There is the attempted base defense by Cloud9. Results in a quadra kill yeah. for the Woo. Fnatic mid laner caps and the Azir. It was a close fight, but then you see kind of that mid to late game prowess of the Azir damage if left untouched. And the nature of the composition is, is with Azir and Sivir, you have so much A hyperscaling potential, but also the, the fact that you have so much reach. You can play such a safe team fight as long as these two carries are still alive. But the takeaway should be, usually you need a big front line for the Azir to auto attack away. And at the start, you're thinking this might be C9's fight. However, all the cooldowns are down Ooh. when the Emperor's Divide comes out. And then who needs a front line when the wall's doing all the work? Yeah, I was just going to say, I, I don't think Caps needs a front line at all when Not he has in such that a case. perfectly no. placed ultimate. He brought his own front line <laughs> with the Emperor's Divide. <laughs> Soldier, Ooh. exactly. Uh, I mean, an incredible amount of damage coming out of that champion there in the late game team fight. Frost, what are your thoughts? Well, what's also really important is we now we see two back-to-back -back games where Jensen falls back to the Lissandra because he wants... Uh, uh, either a safe blind pick or he wants to have the soft answer to LeBlanc to survive the lane phase. And we already saw Rookie take this matchup or take the opposite side where he was Lissandra and he also got blasted by the Azir. So Caps has shown that he's ready for the counter picks. He run understands what the priority picks are and we don't know how deep his champion pool can still go in this best of five. And Caps again picks up your MasterCard player of the game for his performance on that Azir. Jensen really has his work cut out for him if he wants to take this guy down in the next three games. Absolutely. I mean, Caps in this game but also in this series has been living up to his pre-tournament expectations. Uh, he did have some slightly weaker games in the quarterfinals or in the group stage, but he's really showing up here. You can see it starting in the draft phase. The things that they're willing to do, like the first pick, LeBlanc, the fact that Cloud9 is banning a Kali and Aurelia, and also LeBlanc on their blue side, and then he's still doing this. He's showing his superiority in the series. And Fnatic is showing the big outplays, whether it's through caps or just in game one, the style they put out. But they have those core fundamentals that even in a draft that would have surprised anyone. The Victor bot lane since sparingly in Korean solo queue, but by no means a meta trend, they were still able to analyze on the fly, lose the minimum, and then take over the game. And that's the sign of a world finalist right there. But just at the beginning of today, Jao, we were talking about how Jensen has somewhat returned to his own form, you know, to this aggressive play style where he's able to pick up solo kills. So of all the matchups I'm looking at, when I look at that mid lane, I would assume that Jensen is, a cap is capable of matching up against this guy, and yet Lissandra twice, and yet lose twice. Listen, if Cloud9 wants any chance in this series, we've never had reverse sweep in Worlds, if they have any chance in the series, Jensen has to beat Caps in the 1v1. Yep. 
no matter what, it has to happen. And he'll have to do it without side selection. Riot Games' first global sponsor, MasterCard, wants to reward fans who go all out to celebrate the greatest tournament of the year by enhancing their experience and naming them the MasterCard Fans of the Day. More London natives, Nick, Kirsten, Sarah, and Rick decided to arrive in Guangzhou in style by repping some of their favorite players' signature champs, whether it's Ambitions Jarvan, Crown's Talia, or Sneaky's Sivir. Now, Fnatic are just one game away from sweeping C9 and booking their trip to the finals. See if they can close out the series when we return. When someone's cosplays as Sneaky. Uh, yeah, so, uh, <laughs> pizza. TP's available to the top lane. Here's Here we go. Gonna find that stun. The engage. Look at the burst damage. They lose the shield up in time to not get burst down, but he's still at half HP. Looking for a bit more. He's gonna find a stun. The spell shielded by Reckless. Come, 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 come. Maybe come, come. Can stop him. Maybe just go solo. Can we finish? Finish? Yeah. Finish? Yeah. Nice one. Last in. Last in. Oh, let's go. 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 let us Welcome back to Level Up, presented by State Farm. As of patch 814, Shelly prioritizes minions and turrets over champions, so try to activate her trinket when the enemy minion wave is cleared so she remains undistracted. Since hard CC can cancel the summoning of Rift Herald, try popping the trinket out of sight, perhaps just out of lane. This makes it harder for the enemy team to interrupt you. A safe summon will also give her a direct line of sight for a turret charge, which at minimum deals 1,500 damage. If executed properly, this offers you a ton of map pressure and allows Rift Herald to do what she loves, net you some sweet turret gold.